When looking at landscape paintings, we can see that the compositions are generally divided into three different areas. These are commonly referred to as the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. Artists throughout the ages have exploited these three divisions in order to achieve a greater sense of depth in their works. Andrew Loomis, in his book Creative Illustration, identified a fourth value as well. But for the sake of brevity, we'll just focus on the three for now. Let's first look at this Albert Koop painting, which is from what is considered the golden age of Dutch landscape painting. We can see the three men on horses in the front are the darkest elements. The middle ground is the gray, and the background, the sky, is the lightest. By separating the composition into these three distinct areas, the viewer is able to easily read the elements and compose them in their minds. This is also quite common if you look at a lot of Gustav Dors engravings. Take a minute and look at these four different engravings and identify the divisions between foreground, middle ground, and background. In this Rembrandt, we can see that he treated the left and right side of the canvas differently as it regards these relationships. However, there are still clear divisions between the foreground, middle ground, and background on the left-hand side of the canvas. The men in the canoe in the foreground are actually darker, while the middle ground is the brightest. The sky is actually the gray. A dark cloud comes in and actually reverses the relationship on the right-hand side of the painting. The middle ground is the darkest, with the foreground being lighter, and the background being the gray, with a creeping black in the top right-hand side. Once you are aware of this relationship, you'll start seeing it everywhere. It's kind of like learning a new word and then hearing it all the time. That's because this principle is ubiquitous in graphic design and entertainment design as well. But this principle doesn't only apply to landscapes. It works in small interiors and still lifes as well. That's because painting is heavily reliant upon edges in order to achieve a sense of depth. The reason is fairly simple, and it involves our friend perspective, albeit in a very basic form. Let's look at this lovely picture of a cat at a restaurant in Italy. We obviously know that the cat occupies the foreground because he's overlapping the buildings behind him. Now, this may seem stupid simple, but the fact that objects aren't transparent is something which is exploited all the time in painting. Painters really want to differentiate between the layers in space by utilizing color or value changes. So often, differences between the layers are exaggerated. In this Mirandi, we can see that each object has a clear value change as it overlaps the object it is in front of. Artists like to exaggerate these differences so they can say that this is in front of this. So your assignment for this lesson is simply to go outside or to a cafe and make 20 little thumbnail sketches in any media of your choice and two finished sketchbook pages exploring this principle. Thumbnail sketches are simply small studies which explore composition and major value changes. By finished pieces, I mean you either have to fill your page all the way to the edges with an interior or landscape study. Don't be afraid of the edges. They are important to frame your composition. You can see more examples of thumbnail sketches and finished pieces if you head over to the link in the description to paintingcourse.com. Now stop watching and start drawing.